I feel like there's been a slight decline of Minecraft's interest over the past nearly three years now, and I'm definitely not the only one to say this. But since I love Minecraft, I've been trying to really figure out what the issue is and how we can fix it. Now obviously, let's just look at society. People cause most of the issues we have today. Pollution, whatever it is, you get it. And it leaves Minecraft with three possible avenues to look down. Either the game developers, so Mojang, technically their owners, so Microsoft, and sometimes in different cases, us as a community. Before we even continue this video, I want to say that Microsoft doesn't really have that much control over Mojang itself, which also translates to the game itself. Microsoft doesn't really have a huge effect on the updates and what puts out, so we can't just say Microsoft is causing Mojang to back up their schedule, causing all these delays and miscommunication. That's definitely something on Mojang, which we'll explain later in this video. See, Microsoft owns something called the intellectual property of Minecraft. That means they own all patents, copyrights, and anything that has to do with the Minecraft brand. So essentially think of merch like clothes and plushies. I also assume they own more of the marketable side of Minecraft, since if you look at Bedrock Edition, the edition largely ran by Microsoft. There is of course the Minecraft Marketplace, which usually has a bunch of maps and skins with DLCs releasing almost monthly. While Java Edition has nothing like that purchasable other than the game itself and a Realm subscription. So let's eliminate the update side from Microsoft's Synchart. Now with that disclaimer out of the way, let's actually figure out the source of Minecraft's issues. And for this, we have to look at the beginning. Let's rewind the time back to 2020. Minecraft's booming. We just had Minecraft Live 2019, probably one of the best Minecraft lives we've ever had. With the aquatic update still fresh in our minds, we also had the inclusion of the nether update. And just as we thought we couldn't get any better, the caves and cliffs update was officially announced by Mojang. Essentially the cave update that many fans have been waiting for for years. Not only the caves, but also the cliffs. From mountains to bundles to the warden being added. The hype around this update was real then it didn't really happen the way we thought. This update has been split across nearly three years now, since it was announced back in 2020 all the way to 2023. And even with 1.20, we still don't even have all of the features, mainly being literally the bundle, which we still don't have after all of these years. And sure at first when it was delayed and announced that the update would be split into two parts, the community was understanding, Mainly understanding due to the fact that we got a whole dedicated video by Agnes and some of the other developers saying, hey guys, updates being delayed, we're having some issues, thank you for understanding, and the community was cool with it for the most part, because they actually communicated with us. And then at Minecraft Live 2021, they just blatantly announced that, hey, the Warden and the Deep Dark and some of the other features are being moved to the Wild update, which has to be one of the worst updates in my opinion. Overall, the main issue is that the Caves and Cliffs update was a bit too ambitious. This update took almost two years to be fully released, and technically I could say taking since we still don't have the bundles, even though they were randomly brought up in 1.20 but were still never added. I don't really have a huge issue with updates getting delayed, but I feel like A, they should have anticipated this more since that's a lot of content in one update, and B, when they realized it was taking a bit longer, communicate a little bit more. The video they released back in 2021 was a great start, but we just needed that for the wild update since apparently we didn't even know because up until Minecraft Live 2021, we had no idea that the Warden and the Deep Dark wouldn't be added into the newly announced Wild update, which is a whole other rabbit hole we can get into later. This is obviously not a Microsoft issue and hardly a fan issue. We expected this update as they originally said, but then got disappointed multiple times, still haven't gotten the bundles. I may love the developers, but I think holding off on one of the most anticipated features of the Cave and Cliffs update was a bit unfair to us. Now let's go back to 2020 again. Minecraft uploaded a video and posted an article about the new migration requirement. All previously made Mojang accounts would now be moved to Microsoft accounts for more quote unquote security. Honestly, I don't like how unnecessary, given the fact that Mojang could easily just increase security on their own platforms and almost manipulative this change is. I mean, who really wants a cape every single player will have since you have to move, like I've said before. And given the fact that we now have a second deadline compared to the first one, originally going to be March 10th, 2022, but now it's September 19th, 2023, I don't think many people are actually moving their accounts, and Mojang and Microsoft definitely don't want players prevented from playing their own game. It almost begs the question if the change is a little bit too complicated for younger players, and I'm not calling them stupid, but I feel like this would require an adult, and who has time for this silly account switching leaving many players stuck with the possibility of never playing the game again until they buy the game again or find their parents to switch their account. This issue actually gets even worse with the most infamous issue with Minecraft being the chat reporting feature. 
Tons of videos, including my own, have already been made discussing this, so I'll assume you know the gist. That Minecraft Java Edition, mainly run by Mojang, now has this chat reporting feature. The reason for this is that Microsoft accounts need to abide by their terms of service. And putting one thing with the other, you see why Java Edition has these changes since Java is now under Microsoft. So obviously, this isn't a game side issue. It's more of a technical issue, so this falls under Microsoft. I don't know if Mojang does have to approve of this or not, but even if they did, I still see this as Microsoft, especially given the fact that previously Mojang listens to the community, but all of a sudden didn't with all this backlash on both events. But around the same time, Minecraft saw another popular event regarding fireflies and the birch forests. Again, probably an issue you know about or have some familiarity with it. Essentially, we saw Birch Forest and Fireflies for the Wild update when it was announced back in 2021, but we never got them. And when I tell Mojang to kindly update us, I don't mean lead us on wondering the state of both of these features, especially if the update releases soon and then they just release an Ask Mojang video saying they aren't adding both. See, me personally at least, I think the Birch Forest makes some sort of sense, but definitely not the Fireflies. If frogs eating Fireflies is such an issue, then simply remove the fact that they eat Fireflies. The last major issue I want to get into deals with the Trails and Tails update. See, to avoid a similar issue as last year, Mojang decided to announce some of the 1.20 features while leaving others announced. Which I guess is fine. And then a whole year after 1.19, 1 1.20 was released and it has to be one of the most controversial updates. And the update isn't even bad. In fact, I'd argue it's pretty good and even better than 1.15, which people aren't complaining about as much. But why is that? 1.15 was one of the most simplistic updates we've gotten in recent years, adding less than 1.20. So why is 1.20 getting so much hate? Well, 1.15 came before the big boom of overhaul updates. Sure, we had 1.13 and 1.14, but we weren't quote unquote spoiled back then. With every update, we as a community expect bigger and better every year. 1.14 exceeded 1.13. 1.16 exceeded that and 1.17 was meant to exceed that as well. But once we got smaller updates, the community didn't like it. From what I've seen at least, other than another criticism, 1.20 is disliked because it wasn't a massive overhaul. And 1.20 haters, if you don't believe that, let me ask you a question. Was there a bad addition or feature that made Minecraft bad in any way that was introduced in 1.20? Well, the answer is no, because all the features, in my opinion at the very least, make Minecraft more interesting. And none of them are even bad, they're just a bit disconnected, which I've seen a lot of spawns of criticism, which is fair. But let's get it straight that it's not bad because all the features are pretty good. Bookshelves, new skulk sensor, camels, and so on. For 1.20, I think we're the blame. Or at least the people who hate on this update for being disconnected and not a massive overhaul like many of us tend to expect every year. Before I end off this video, I want to answer the posed question. And I think it's mainly Microsoft. We as the community are the least likely to kill the game, since we still play it and are pretty active in the community. For Mojang, I'm pretty positive they'll learn from their mistakes and continue to bring quality updates. I think 1.20 should have been a bit more focused when it was announced because it got a lot of skepticism, but since Mojang listens to their community, I have full faith. That leaves us with Microsoft. Even though I doubt any quote unquote party, so to speak, will kill Minecraft, I think Microsoft is going to be the most likely, especially because most spawns of dislike are found with their decisions. Smaller issues and complaints like the new simplified logos are obviously a Microsoft decision because, well, trademarking. And I think it's a bit obvious that the money making side is also because of them. Hence why we've gotten two spin-offs with an abundance of microtransactions and of course, Bedrock Edition being a Microsoft edition with the whole marketplace and character creator transactions. Even Minecraft's music was affected. Which if you want to know more about that, just check out my look into C418's rough departure from Minecraft, in addition to a whole dedicated video about the Minecraft marketplace. Also, check out what other videos interest you on screen right now.